everyone, welcome back to the So So Vintage series. So, some people like to put on the Ritz. Here we like to put on the ruffle. So, <laughs> today we are adding the ruffle to the skirt and um, <laughs> this ruffle just really, really brings out the whimsy in the skirt and I just think it's so much fun. So this is going to be probably a bit of a short video um, since I am getting ready to leave for the Waverly Hills Sanatorium investigation tomorrow morning and <laughs> I'm trying to get this uploaded, filmed, edited, uploaded and everything so it will go up on Sunday because as we know hotels are notoriously bad with their upload speeds so I'm hoping to have it scheduled for upload on Sunday and cross our fingers nothing goes wrong with this video and you guys receive it on time but um, it will be a little bit shorter than normal just because I haven't had a lot of time to sew this week but it's a fun step and I hope you guys enjoy it now I've gone ahead and cut out my ruffle in my white bubble fabric and again, this was when I made the ruffle, I built it in with a half inch seam allowance. So we've got two pieces because you're going to cut out two pieces and you're going to lay it right sides together. And we're just going to stitch half an inch in and just stitch all the way down. So we have one really, really long ruffle. So our ruffle is now stitched together, but we don't want this to fray and you can see how this is already starting just slightly to fray up here if left alone this will just fray away and then your stitches will become not strong you are going to take your pinking shears and cut right down here to prevent the fraying you can also use a zigzag stitch that will help as well i cut it pretty close to the stitch now what we're going to do we're going to take this over to the ironing board and we are going to iron open that seam so this lies nice and flat. So the next thing the instructions call for is to do a rolled foot hem on the very edge, the bottom edge of our ruffle. Now, I don't have one of those fancy uh, feet for my sewing machine that would actually create a rolled foot hem. <laughs> it actually, what the foot does is it essentially kind of pushes the fabric and curls it over for you while you're stitching so you don't actually have to do it you just kind of stitch right down and it does all the rolling for you if you have one of those feet foot foots footses go ahead and use that if you're like me and you do not have that foot let me show you how to do it you want to make sure you've got your pins handy and then you are essentially just going to make sure you're on the wrong side of the fabric so you're just barely going to roll this over and then roll it again so you have a very very small roll then you want to place your pin right through it it is going to be a little bit tedious when you start but as you start to go it essentially kind of starts to roll itself i'm going to continue to pin this and when i'm done pinning all of this down i will see you at the sewing machine but here what we're going to do is we're going to try to stitch as close to our fold as possible and then what I do especially on these kind of tricky areas is I bring the fabric in just a little bit farther so I can back stitch all the way to the end so I'm just going to go forward and then back stitch to the end and then go forward again and then as soon as you're able grab hold of the fabric in the back and hold the fabric taunt in the front but not tight and then just help guide that through and then you're just going to do that all the way down to the end and then back stitch at the end our rolled foot hem is now done and it really is kind of a nice like finishing hem because you are going to see this side of the ruffle on the apron so it is just gives it a nice finished look Remember that ruffle guide that we cut out out of the book a couple videos ago? Well, we're going to use that odd looking piece. What you're going to do with the ruffle guide is on the wrong side of the fabric, you're going to place the ruffle guide. You want it to line up here with the edge of your fabric. And then I just take one pin and kind of stick it just right in the middle. Because then what you are going to do is you're going to cut right along the edge 
what the ruffle guide does is it give a, gives us this nice curve to the fabric because when we attach this to the apron, it is going to give it a nice finished edge on each side of the ruffle. Now what we're going to do with that ruffle is on the cut edge, we're going to do a baste, a stitch all the way around the cut edge and we're going to do that at a quarter of an inch in. To do a basting stitch, you want to turn your stitch length knob to the highest and that will make it a loose, looser, looser stitch. And the reason I'm going right inside that hem is because when you yank on, <laughs> not yank, when you gently pull on the string on the base stitch here to make your ruffles, it's going to be too difficult to pull it through the little hem here that we stitched. You're not going to back stitch, you're just going to go forward and you're going to do that all the way to the end. So now we're going to take our apron, the body of our apron, and you're going to lay it down right side up and you want to make sure that your trim that you uh, stitched on already is laying towards the inside of the apron. For your ruffle, you want to make sure that it is the wrong side face up. Then you are going to take that cut edge and you're going to lay it right up to the edge of the apron. Now I pin right up at the very top. Then you're going to find that center stitch in your apron that you created when you put the trim down. You have where the trim joined up together. So that's where you're going to take the ruffle where that joined up together and you're going to match it up and pin it. Now with our one side pinned, our center pinned, we're now going to actually start to create the ruffle. Because essentially this ruffle is longer than the apron itself. So we're going to tug and pull and create a ruffle that will be equivalent to the same size. So we're going to keep doing that until everything matches up. Which is why I pin the center so that it kind of has a natural stop point. Because you don't want one side to have too many ruffles and the other side no no. That would be disastrous. Alright. So you're going to find the tails of your base stitch. And what I like to do is separate them. And tug on one and then tug on the other because one stitch is always going to kind of pull a little bit easier than the other and then as you gently tug on it it will start to create a little bit of a ruffle then you're just gonna push that ruffle down because you don't want it all clumped up in one space you want it distributed evenly I'm still holding on to my stitch in the back I'm holding here and then I'm just kind of tugging it out. That sounds so wrong. <laughs> and just bring it down. Like I said, go slow and take your time with it and you'll have a fabulous ruffle. Once the ruffle is all ruffled up, you are just going to match the edges, so the cut edges, and you're going to pin it down. Then once you have your ruffle all ruffled, you're going to go ahead and pin down the cut edge. Now with the edges, you're going to want to make sure that you're lining up with the um, trim because that's where our waist ties are going to go in. So you want to have enough space there without making it overly bulky. Then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch that together and we'll do that again at a quarter of an inch. So just on top of the base stitch that we did or um, just on the outside of it. So there we go. Our ruffle is all stitched on. Doesn't that look super cute? There's the, the polka dotted trim we put on. And do you remember how the ruffle guide had us do that slope off corner? That is why. So that the ruffle naturally slopes in, giving it a nice, really nice finished look. So that is it for today's So So Vintage. I hope you guys really enjoyed placing the ruffle. I just think it makes it look so super cute. And in the next video we are going to be doing, if we have enough time, we'll be doing the straps, putting those on, and also putting the lining on. And then after that, it's almost done. 
Mm. And if you want even more of this face, go ahead and check out my other videos like vlogs on Tuesdays, hair tutorials on Thursdays, or if you missed part three of this series, you can go ahead and you can find it right there. And if you are new to A Vintage Vanity, click subscribe. That's going to let you know when new videos are up. That way you won't miss anything that goes on on the channel. And I love hearing from you guys, so comment section below. Let me know what's going on. I sound like a car salesman today. I don't know why. And as always, click that thumbs up, like button. Let me know you like the video. And also it helps to promote the channel. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you soon. Bye.